Hello, once again, it's me, John, from Tesla Gurus. And we've been let out. Uh, we're actually free again, almost, um, to have a little play in the English countryside. We've brought a few Model 3s down today, driven by the rest of the team, and um, we're going to have a bit of fun with them. So what's the best thing to do with a bit of private road and some Model 3s? Well, it's obvious, isn't it, really? Not to 60s. But hold on, hold on a second. We're not that obvious here at Tesla Gurus. So let's bring that car back. That's right, we're gonna do some stopping tests, 60 to zero. So in each car, we put one of these RaceLogic new performance box touch devices. These work on GPS and accelerometers. Uh, they can measure all sorts of stuff, record it to the SD card. You can have speed read out very accurately. You can have lap timing if you're a particular circuit. It works all that out for you. Obviously, you do the acceleration runs, 0 to 60, 0 to 100, whatever. But today, we're going to use the deceleration facility on there to measure 60 to 0 stopping times. So once you've got this installed in the car and it's got GPS lock, when you hit the brakes at 60, the performance box will measure that time it's taken for you to get to 0. It'll also give you a peak G-force and tell you how far you've gone. And that's the figure that we're going to look at in detail today. And I should also point out that all the cars have been set up in exactly the same way today. We've checked all the tyre pressures are the same. We've put the cars into sport mode, acceleration wise, standard steering mode and standard regen. So we've got all different configurations with the cars here today and we're going to test them multiple times. The idea is to see if we can see some sort of trend uh, as to why some cars have a greater stopping distance than others. Each car is going to line up at a cone, which is the starting point, and then they're going to accelerate away up to 60 miles an hour, which obviously only takes a few seconds with a Model 3. When they come to roughly where the cones are, they're going to brake as hard as possible. It doesn't really matter that they're hitting the brakes exactly where those cones are because the performance box is measuring exactly when the car slows from 60. Before we start, let's remind ourselves what the highway code says about typical stopping distances. And at 60 miles an hour, there is apparently 18 metres worth of thinking time before you actually decide and hit the brake pedal. And then it takes 55 metres to stop the car. That's, of course, in dry conditions. If it was wet or even icy, it would be a lot further than that. And we have done tests before on the skid pan to see just how far cars will go with standard tyres and winter tyres. And it's quite surprising. But today it's dry, so let's use that 55 metre distance as a benchmark and just see how these Model 3s do against that. And the first test we're going to run is going to be with the cars cold. Uh, they've been sitting around for an hour before we started this first test. And the first car up is the 2020 Model 3 long range. It's got the standard 18 inch Michelin Pilot Sport 4s. So let's see how it does. So Joe's accelerating hard off the line. He's aiming just to get above 60 miles an hour so that when he brakes, the performance box will trigger. And when he stops and almost loses his sunglasses, we get the first reading, which is 34.30 meters. Uh, it took a total of 2.58 seconds to stop and a peak G-force was 1.11 G, but we're not gonna look at that data. We're just gonna look at the distance today. So let's see how that measures up against the highway codes recommended distance of 55 meters. Well, obviously it's a lot shorter, 34.3 metres, 112 feet, not a bad stopping distance at all. And to put that into perspective, it's another four and a half car lengths shorter than the recommended distance. So how does this compare with other cars in its class? Well, I found some testing that had been done in the US. And as we can see here, the BMW 3 Series came out with 103 feet, a Mercedes-Benz C-Class 124 feet, so we're somewhere in between there. It's fairly typical for that size and weight of car, I think. So let's get back to the testing, and now we're going to try a 2019 Model 3 Performance with the standard 20-inch Michelin Pilot Sport 4 S tyres. These are the ones that were fitted before they switched to Pirelli's. So standard car, obviously the performance has got better brakes, supposedly, than the long range, so let's see what we get here and it's 38.92. So that's 128 feet, a little bit longer than the Model 3 long range, surprisingly enough, but still three and a half car lengths shorter than the recommended distance. But it does seem odd that the performance with the uprated brakes takes longer to stop than the long range. So let's try a different test. We've now got 
a Model 3 performance with a big brake kit fitted. So this is racing calipers and racing discs fitted to the front, but it's still got the 20 inch Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tyres. We can see the ABS is working there to stop the wheels from locking completely. And we've ended up there with a distance of 34.18 metres or 112 feet, so that's significantly better than the last test we carried out with the standard brakes on the Model 3 Performance, but it's still very close to that original figure we got from the Model 3 Long Range. So let's go back to the Model 3 Performance with standard brakes, but now we've fitted Michelin Cup 2 tyres to it. The Cup 2 is a track tyre. It is road legal, but it's really optimised for use on track. This particular version of the Cup 2 is called the Cup 2 Connect and it comes with sensors in the tyres that link with your phone to give you pressures and temperatures in real time. But let's not forget that these first tests we're doing are with the brakes and the tyres cold, so they're not warm at all uh, and that may affect the results. Let's have a look. I think that actually caught our cameraman out a little bit there because he was probably expecting the car to stop a little bit shorter. So let's just see exactly how far that went. Well, almost 43 metres, 141 feet there, and although it's less than the 55 metre recommended stopping distance, it's the worst result so far. And so the last test we're going to run will be with a 2019 Model 3 Performance uh, with the big brake kit and the Michelin Cup 2s fitted. So this is very much a, a track spec car. Um, it should be very good at stopping. So slightly better than the last run, just over 40 metres, nearly 40 and a half metres, but uh, look at that, it's still the second furthest stop that we've had today. So what's going on? Well, as we've already said, those first tests were run when the cars were cold and uh, after a few runs with each car, as you'd expect, everything warms up a bit, the tyres, the brakes, uh, getting a bit hot. In fact, you can see here, there's some sparks coming off the front brakes on the big brake kit. Now that is just dust that's got trapped between the grooves burning off, so it's nothing to worry about. The, the temperatures aren't getting that hot. But it gives us the chance to run the tests again with slightly warmer tyres and brakes, see if it makes a difference. And first off again, we're gonna use the Model 3 long range with the standard brakes. So what we'll do on our graphic is compare the run that we did when the car was cold to the run where it's a little bit warmer. And you can see the result here is yes, we've managed to get a slightly shorter distance. So let's go from the long range to the standard Model 3 performance with the Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tyres and the standard brakes. And on this run, we were aiming to better 38.9 metres. And yes, it's pulled up at 34, just under 35 metres. So that's quite a good improvement. So now we're going for the same specification, but with the big brake kit fitted on the front. And we're trying to better 34 metres. And as we can see, we've just got under that. So in each case so far, it does seem as though once the car's warmed up a bit, we can reduce the braking distance by a few metres. So moving on to the Model 3 Performance with the Cup 2 tyres. Let's see what it compares to with the cold tyres. And that's a fairly good improvement in fact, but interestingly it's still not as short as the Model 3 Long Range. And finally we've got our track spec car, so with Cup 2 tyres and the big brake kit. And that's come out this time with slightly warmer tyres at 35.3 metres, fairly respectable, but again, still further than the cars with a completely standard setup. We thought we'd try one more thing before we ended the test today, and because those Cup 2 track tyres are really designed to work at a much higher temperature than normal road tyres, we thought we'd go out and try and get a bit of heat into them. So you can see here I'm using the Connect app on my phone on the dashboard, and we are getting some heat into them. It's nowhere near what we would expect on track, but we wanted to see if it was gonna make a difference to the braking test. So we did a complete lap of weaving the car like this, and then we went straight into another 60 to zero deceleration test, uh, just to see if we can try and get um, a better result than we have already on the track setup.
So that did feel a lot better. And in fact, look at the result. We've got 33 metres stop. So that is actually the best of the day. It's still maybe a lot further than you might think with those uprated brakes and those track tyres. And if you compare it with the original long range with completely standard brakes, completely standard 18-inch tyres, uh, there's not a lot of difference. So what can we conclude from all of this? The first thing I'd say is if we look at the best and the worst results in certain categories, the worst and the best overall stopping distances were cars fitted with the Track Cup 2 tyre. And that really proves that a track tyre needs to be up to temperature before it starts to work properly. If we then look at the cars that have got the standard factory brakes fitted, uh, the long range especially, and we compare that with the best brakes that we've got today, which are six pot racing calipers and racing discs, actually we can see there's very little difference. So that would lead us to conclude that the braking system itself doesn't have a major effect on stopping distance. It's actually the tyres that are doing most of the work here. So when we compare tyres and we look at the standard Pilot Sport 4s on the long range, look at the Pilot Sport 4S, which is a better tyre, a higher performance tyre, as fitted to the Model 3 performance, and that we compare that with the Cup 2 tyre again, uh, we can actually see there is a trend here. And really it's to do with the temperature that these tyres are running at and are designed to work optimally at. So what does this mean for you, the driver? Well, it means that it's probably better to concentrate on selecting the right tyre for the conditions you're driving in than it is to have a flashy uprated braking system. That's not really going to help you. Uprated brakes are designed to manage heat better when you're doing repeated long stops from higher speeds. So if you're on track, then you need uprated brakes, which is why you have a bigger brake kit. But that isn't going to give you an advantage on the road in normal conditions. Now we do have plans for future videos that will go even further into braking and little tweaks that you can make to your road car just to make the brakes feel better. But for now I'd just like to thank the Tesla Gurus team, you all know who you are. Thanks for helping out with this one and we'll see you again in future videos. And as always if you've enjoyed watching this video please do comment, please click that like button, press the subscribe and ring the bell because then you'll know when we've got other videos coming out. So until then, thanks very much for watching, see you again soon.